amateur players are completely fooled, completely baffled by the movement down and the release. The quality of your release determines the effectiveness of your downswing and it progressively breaks down as we go through the levels. What level are you at? And it's affecting millions of golfers. The worse the release is, the wider the downswing, losing angles. Does this sound like you? Just touching the grass before you touch the ball, not quite getting the compression and the shaft lean that you're after. And it's time to really wake up and understand what's happening here, people. Do you really need to see another video on how to turn your hips in YouTube? This is really the truth, what we're seeing with millions and millions of players throughout the world. Now we've got the data. We've got the facts, we've got the information, we know what the great players are doing. And this is just helping so many people play better golf. So guys, have a look at these positions here. Isn't it amazing when you look at how close the wrists are together here, the right wrist, inner flexion, the lead wrist, inner extension. Following evidence-based instruction is the fastest way to improve. Getting your hands and wrists to move more effectively. This is how you pick up your lag, your speed, it loosens up your swing, you start to create effortless power. So people, this is what has everyone baffled, everybody fooled out there. These still photos taken just at impact. Now this is the same goal for the same player, right? Now 12 degrees of shaft lean on the right of the screen, that's the PGA average. If you don't have enough shaft lean, it compromises your consistency and your compression. So 12 degrees is the average. But to get that, look what he does. Now watch this release, this fluid release as the club releases past the body. Have a look at the lead wrist, it's cupped, right wrist into a flex position. Now you've got around 0.1 second from here to here. So to be able to handle an angle like this, to build up your angles, right, you've got to be able to release it. The quality of your release determines the effectiveness of your downswing. If you don't have a good release, you're going to release it early. You're going to flip it, you're going to stand up, and you're going to lose your shaft lean. So people, once we start to work with evidence-based material, we improve. Look at the right wrist of Oosthuis and left wrist in a cupped position. The creases of the skin on the back of the lead hand there from Fred Couples grip pointed downwards. Moving in the right direction with your golf, not wasting your time, not working on the opposites. This is part of the series called The Move of Millions on WorldClassGolf.com. Now I'm going to take you through a step by step, some incredible drills here. And the last one of the last drills in this video is going to blow you away. Let's all get on the path to playing the golf that we should be playing. Let's get stuck into it. This is what your hand does through the golf ball. It doesn't roll over like this. We don't hang on to the angle all the way through. We've got to get this right wrist in this flex position. I set it on hack motion between minus 30, minus 50. And this is what gives me the, the feedback with the sound. When I start to get in this position here, the club's coming up steep and we've hung on to it too long. I think a lot of people, what they think happens, right, in the swing is they think it's just sort of, they're doing this drill and they go in through the ball like this or something, but the lead arm actually separates from the chest and this is where we start to get chicken wings. Actually, when we don't release the club, we tend to release it really early and people are still trying to drag this grip in where in actual fact, when we let the club release past the body, we can start to pick up some angles, especially this trail wrist, right? You've got to get a big angle in that. And then as you get down, of course you've got your shaft lean, right? But then you've got to get to release the thing past your body. And this is how we get extension and the speed and the whip of the golf club, right? So we've got the moves coming down and you've got to get the, it's just people sort of think it somehow goes this way. It's just misinformation that's hurting so many golfers. People aren't reaching their potential because they don't know what the hands of the wrist really do. Get your feedback, get this style of information, and you start to work with evidence-based instructions, what we're showing people at worldclassgolf.com, 1,400 videos on the platform, online lessons helping people from all around the world. So guys, all right, let's have a look at this drill. So here's what we do. All right, when we move down, we've got a right angle here. When the hands are opposite your left leg, you've got the hands under the chin here, you've got a right angle. Now I want the lead wrist just, slightly bowed down, not much, but just a little bit. From this position here, we're gonna pump the arms a couple of times, and then we're gonna swing through, and what I want you guys to do is get like an L position in on this side when the arms are just past parallel. What it's gonna do is gonna get your lead wrist in an extended position, 
And if you can, I want you to get this trail wrist, this right wrist in a slightly flexed position. And this really whips the club head through. And it doesn't matter if you hit it clean or not, just at the start, you will get better at it, but it's a great way to feel, right? What, what great players are doing. Let's get into it. All right, this is what we do. So get your set up, get yourself left hands under the chin here, all right? One, two, get a feel for it. And then get through and get that position. Might be just past parallel. So when you start to get your hands moving, you know, effectively, we're gonna get some, we're gonna get some whip, we're gonna get some speed. Let's do one more. Great drill, this one here, guys. So get your set up, left hand, get the angle, bow it down. One, keep it nice and loose in your, in your grip. Two, and get around this side. Maybe just went a little bit too far there, but once again, hit it pretty good. And that way you can get a feel starting here, working back and getting this club head to whip through, knowing that we're not doing this, right? And this is an essential part of practice. Part of what we have in world-class golf is a deep to shallow swing series and the move of millions. And I gotta be honest with you guys, through that and the online lessons, we're really getting people to play some great golf. Join the chat room, join the community there. So people, take a second to have a look at this. Now, obviously you can hit held off, compressed, stinger-style punch shots with a with a low fade and all those type of shit. and there's there's some drills out there for really advanced players but well, you have to agree with me Let, let's get the hands moving first right Let, let's get let's get this type of position that effortless power that fluidity of motion that we see with couples here and, and ooze toys and where the grip points towards the target before the hands get behind the head before you start to work on the tiger woods stinger Right now, if it's good enough for McElroy, Ooze Toys, and the couples, what I'm trying to get you guys to do is free up your hands to get more speed, get more power, get more sharp length. Because I mean, you, you don't need another video on how to turn your hips, right? You, you've got enough of those. You've got to start to work with some evidence-based material here. Now, unfortunately, with a lot of the club golfers, we're not seeing that as easy as you might think this is to get the end of the grip to point to the target before your hands get behind your head. I bet you, in your first try, you can't do it. Right, but when you practice it, you will, and it's going to free up your entire motion, and your body will follow a lot of the movements that the hand does. Don't think that by turning your hips, you're going to get a world class release, an unbelievable hand motion. It's just not going to happen, right? So, let's have a look at a drill how we can feel this now and bring it into your game. It's a simple, basic area, but has a tremendous positive chain reaction on your entire motion. Get up into the end position, just hold the position. Right, so that's where we learn 40% visually, we learn 30% through feel. So by getting yourself into a position here, we're exaggerating it just slightly. Get the grip, or feel like the grip's pointed up. Have a look at your lead wrist, and how does it feel? Get your knees together, get a little bit of side bend. Now from this position here, what you can do, what's really effective to create some feels, your own personal feels, is swing back from here, and then through. And you can even close your eyes, just gathering feelings here as this end of this grip points up. You might want to feel like the club swooshes out 20 or 30 centimetres in front of the ball. Right? That'll really pick up some angles in your downswing here, moving through and into the position. Now, what you can do is start from this position, get up to the top, right? swing back and give it a hit and mimic, create, copy, imitate, stealing fields, stealing positions that we wouldn't normally have. We're just trying to copy the best players in the world, evidence-based material, the averages of movement. So guys, right, got a great drill here to create your wrist and hand, or more wrist and hand awareness, how they work more effectively, your hands and your wrists here. And this is just supplies so many different feels. Let's go through it. What we're gonna do is we learn 40% visually and 30% through feel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move through into the halfway position here where the right arm is parallel to the ground. Now, what I'm looking at doing is getting your hands to look like this. So the right wrist is really flexed. The lead wrist is in extension. Now, when we're moving through, it's not rolled over, right? So we're not rolling it over but we're getting this type of 
uh, look to it. The plane of the club's going to come out really low here as well, so that's not spoken about enough as it really promotes a low delivery here. We take a practice swing, just swing back over the ball, just creating feels. Like your, your drills don't change everything. The, what the drill does is it supplies you with a feel, and through that feel you hit balls, and then you can change. But you've got to look down at your hands. So from this position here, firstly just get into the position. You can see the three fingers here. I'm going to swing back over the ball, keep it nice and soft. Now so much speed comes out of your hands and your wrists. You know how we we see, unfortunately, players losing a bit of angle here and coming through the ball. Watch what happens when my right wrist moves into a flex position and the lead wrist. This is what's into extended position. This is what's happening. So from there, take your, a swing over the golf ball and try and get the club to swoosh out in front here. This is how we're really getting the release to work and get that shaft lean and that whip down the bottom. And let's go back. like. That was hit, it wasn't a big swing, but it went a long way, because your speed coming out of the hands and the wrists. Now for the senior players, it's important as the body, you know, when you get over 45 years of age, the body starts to really slow down, but you can get your hands to move more effectively. Into the position, do a practice swing, get the club to swoosh out in front. Just got that a tiny bit heavy out here in front, swing back, and that's getting that whip down the bottom which supplies you with great wrist alignments, speed. It's going to stop you from standing up. It's going to help you get sharply. It's going to free up your motion. It's one of the best areas in the golf swing.